Okay, welcome back. In today's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at a Super Nintendo board. Now, this thing just came as is. It was just a board. There was no console shell. I didn't pay much for this, but I figured it'd make for an interesting video. So let me see if I can get this to work. So let me just unplug everything and just take a better look at this. Now, this console doesn't look too bad. It's not rusty or anything. I noticed that someone has bridged this fuse here, so I suspect that fuse is dead. So it's not the end of the world. Usually you don't want to do that. That's not a good practice. But if you are if you don't have any fuses on hand and you just want to test it really quick, yeah, whatever. I also noticed that the back piece here for the power uh, port, it seems like somebody tried to replace it and didn't do a good job. So let me um, replace this power port and replace that fuse and see if this works. So I got a solder pump here. I usually don't use this tool. But for these situations here where the desoldering braid can't really get into the, these holes, the solder sucker is ideal. And it's not, not too hard once you get the hang of it. So now the reason why I'm having more trouble that is because I didn't add any more solder to these through holes here. If I would have added more solder, would have created a better suction, and I probably could have gotten this all in one shot. But since I didn't do that, it took me several attempts, but I did ultimately get it. So the seller didn't include a controller port, but they did include the power switch, the sound module, and this power port here. They could have kept it for themselves for another unit, so I'm actually grateful for that. I don't know if this is the original one there. It looks aftermarket to me. It just has like a subtle, some subtle differences, but either way, I don't have to come out of pocket to replace these power ports. It, 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 it was included. Now there's a screw missing and this is actually a crucial screw to keep everything together. So I'm going to be replacing that later on in the video. But for now I just want to see if this console will light up. So with everything soldered in place, I always like to clean off this flux. Uh, just 99% alcohol and a toothbrush takes two seconds and it makes the job look a lot neater. Now since I buy these fuses in bulk, I do have a lot on hand. So it doesn't take much, it doesn't cost much to replace this fuse and it takes little to no time. So before I even start this console up, I'm going to swap out this, this bodge wire and this old fuse. So I thought I pressed record when I clipped these leads on this fuse, on the legs of this fuse, and I didn't. So it's not really important, just I took some flush cuts and cut this fuse to size. So I apologize for that. So 
So I went downstairs to grab a controller port to test this console and um, out of the parts bin the one I picked out actually is a controller port with a purple LED so just disregard the purple LED. So now it's time to test so I plug everything up and it does work it does fire up so I'm gonna run the burn-in test to see if there's anything else I should take a look at but so far so good. Disregard the static and distortion you see that's just my power brick I use this for everything and every console I test with it has these lines So after running the test I did get HV timer fail now I don't know where the HV timer is I don't know what it is I don't know what chip it pertains to it could be PPU 1 2 the CPU it could be uh, the work RAM or one of the video RAMs So I got a website that I refer to when I don't know what's going on and usually it, it helps me out a bit so I'm going to be showing that right here. So I think this website was archived a while back. Uh, it was somebody's blog when some technician that used to service Super Nintendo's and I think um, Super Nintendo arcade cabinets, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, so when, whenever I have a fault, I refer to this page to see if it hasn't already been solved. And under PPU2 section, it says there, here are a couple of um, faults and failed tests. And one of them includes HV timer. So I'm going to be swapping the, the PPU2 first and hope, hopefully it'll work. So oftentimes I get questioned what is the liquid that I use to remove these chips. And it's just this rosin colophane flux and it's MG chemical brand. Now I actually do use two different kinds of flux for different applications. But the liquid no clean flux to remove these chips it evaporates too fast. And in the past, I have used the liquid no clean to remove these chips, and it, it, it's pretty, uh, it doesn't have great efficacy. It, it, it works, it works, but it's just not, not the correct way. The actual, to remove these chips, there, there's like a paste flux that comes in a syringe. I don't actually have that, so I think this is the next best thing. But you really should be, I, I, I really should be looking to buy some, the, the paste flux. But I don't have any right now, so I'm just going to use this. So when I remove these chips, sometimes these uh, pads here, they're bumpy. And they don't allow the next chip to be seated properly to, soldered, to be soldered in place. So what I'll take is a desoldering braid and just go across these, these pins here. Just to flatten them down so when I lay down the new chip, everything is flush. So now I need a PPU2. So here's my parts box and I have a whole bunch of components in here that this is all Super Nintendo circuitry components. So I, let me see if I actually do have a PPU2. And it looks like I do. So I'll get this PPU, try it out. Hopefully it works. Also it's easy to mix up the orientation of these chips. So as you can see the one on the left side of this shot is upside down. And I laid the new chip upside up, just I laid it on the board. But you want to, when you solder this in place, they have a correct orientation. So make sure it's correct. Double check. So since this is a 100 pin quad flat package chip, you always want to make sure that all four sides are perfectly aligned. And I really want to emphasize perfectly because these chips can't even be off by one tenth of a millimeter. They have to be really, really spot on. And this is the hardest part because you can just bump the chip and right there, just, just a subtle tap and it'll go right off and you, you'll have to realign it. So just make sure because you can have one edge that's perfect and then the other three are off. Or you can even have two edges that are perfect and the other two are off. 
so you can't you you really have to line these chips up even soldering them in place isn't as hard as lining them up so what I like to do is I I really just so subtly drop solder in all four corners of this chip just to tack it pin it in place so it won't move and then I come back with flux and and since the chip is pinned it won't move I put flux on all four sides and then solder it in place and once it, once the chip is perfectly aligned soldering it in place is, is a breeze it's not too it's not as hard as it may seem so even don't worry about bridging the pins when you're soldering it in place just focus on putting uh, laying down enough uh, solder not too much you don't have to go too crazy just a little bit of solder and then with some flux if you have a bridge like in this situation just keep touching it and and add a little flux until the bridge is gone now you want to make sure to double check your work that there are no bridges because then for one bridge and you you're you won't get anything so just double check your work also make sure that you pin all the legs in place because you might overlook one or you might miss one if one isn't soldered in place then you're going to get a black screen and you won't know what's going on so there's really a lot going on here but it's not too difficult with a little bit of practice you should be able to do this as well so if you're a beginner as a disclaimer i don't recommend you try to do surface mount rework especially with these uh, uh, uh pin pitch chips that have that are tightly grouped because you, you're it's going to be very difficult for somebody just starting off if I if you do have a, a hot air rework station and you do want to do surface mount rework what I recommend is something with a, a pin pitch much more forgiving such as like some Super Nintendo games have ROMs and RAMs that are much more forgiving when it comes to surface mount rework and I recommend starting off with that not QFP chips so just make sure that you get more practice before you start reworking these CPUs or PPUs. Okay, I'm actually disappointed. I didn't hit record. I had a video footage of the console not working. In fact, it actually got worse. There was vertical lines on the screen and it would still it still had HV timer failed. So what I suspect is the PPU that I have is bad. I don't know why I went into the parts bin, but I'm going to toss that in the garbage in, uh, later on in the video. So I did actually put the old PPU back on. So you'll see that and the PPU is already back on. And if I look at the page again, it says that CPU can actually cause the HV timer to fail. So I looked, I, sh I overlooked it because it was actually listed first on the page. So I just scrolled really fast and I didn't check so now I know that the HV timer failing could also be the CPU so I'm gonna be swapping the CPU now so digging through my parts bin I did find the board that is just too far gone and a lot of rust and corrosion I actually removed the pin connector already and there's too many broken traces under here I, I actually scratched up all the rust with a, a fiberglass pen and a piece of sandpaper and just too many broken traces so but Fortunately enough, it looks like the main chip circuit is actually good. It, uh, the CPU is okay. The PPU looks to be okay. So I got four more chips or a couple more chips that I can use for parts. So taking a closer look, I did scratch up. Like I said, I scratched up the board to try to look at the traces. And you see there's one, two, three. It was like, uh, like 100 broken traces. So I'm not going to patch that. This is for parts. So here's the CPU, and I'm going to be pulling it out of circuit. I'm actually looking to source some of these main boards because Super Nintendo boards you just can't find them and when you do there people want too much money they want top dollar for stuff that's for parts so uh, I'm not gonna pay almost as much as a, a complete unit or a, a working unit than I for for a non-working part board so I gotta figure out how I'm gonna source these parts so if you have any ideas please post them down below in the comment section so here's the board that I'm looking to save. So I'm going to do the same thing, just add some flux to this chip and heat it up and pull it off.
So I actually use a T12 style iron and as you can see I have two tips here. One is they're the same profile but one is just smaller. The smaller tip is a KU and the larger tip is a K. So I'm going to use the K tip. It just covers more surface and it actually heats up and maintains optimal thermal uh, temperature much much better. So I'm going to use the larger tip for this uh, CPU. So I actually didn't run the desoldering braid across these pads. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, in this case, I could, I did get a good uh, angle on this chip, so I was able to lay it down a lot easier, and it didn't, it wasn't off. So I didn't need to remove the the excess solder. So as you can see, everything's lined up, and it, it effortlessly it just floats into place. So hopefully now with the CPU swapped, it will work. So we'll take a look at that later on in the video. So when I'm done soldering the chip in place, I always clean it up with some 99% alcohol. You don't want the, the flux sitting on the board because it can cause um, shorts or it, I, I don't know if it'll cause shorts or not, but in the past I've known that uh, the console sometimes wouldn't work with the flux with so much flux on the board it, it would actually black screen still and then I eventually did clean the flux off and it worked perfectly so I always I, I always made a mental note to clean the flux before I even try to start the console up so here's the old CPU and the new CPU is already in the circuit the old the original PPU for this board is back into circuit and I'm gonna try it out see if it works So as usual on camera, it, always, it never fires up the first try, but after playing with the cartridge, it eventually does fire up. So I suspect maybe the cartridge con uh, connector needs to be cleaned, or even my service cart needs to be cleaned. Now since this service cartridge is used in so many old, dirty consoles, I've cleaned this cartridge more often than any other cartridge that I own. Yeah, and if you don't clean these cartridges, they can give you a false black screen. It's happened to me so many times in the past where I think that the console isn't working and then I'll clean the service cart and it'll fire right up. So if you're new to this channel, I use this cartridge often. It, uh, it tests various hardware on the Super Nintendo. Sometimes it doesn't give you a clear-cut answer to what's wrong, but it gives you a general idea. And with some uh, experience, you'll eventually uh, learn to know what is what, what pertains to what. So right now it's running like a PPU test uh, video where it tests mode 7 and other background layers. And I don't actually sit through all of that. I'll, I'll do that off camera. But here I'm going to test Star Fox. Now Star Fox is one of the good games that I like to use to test because it has the extended board. So it, 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 it tests other functions. And since this game also uses a special... Um, ROM or RAM or special uh, FX chip rather it also adds a little more um, another test to the Super Nintendo to make sure everything is correctly working so early in this video I mentioned that I was missing one of these screws now this is an important screw because it holds the plastic piece and it holds the RF module in place or it just keeps everything flush so on the part board I actually have the screw so I'm gonna just add from the part board over to the the, the fixed board and it should and we should close out this project now this is why I keep these old boards on hand because every time I need you think that that's you don't need any more parts from the board and you you get surprises like this where somebody will send you a console with missing uh, 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 obscure screw that's missing so in closing I hope you like this video I know I've been doing a lot of cartridge repair and I want to get back to console repairs as well and this popped up on eBay so it just uh, I took the opportunity to pick pick it up and see what I can do and I really like doing this these projects the, the Super Nintendo work I like the most just it, I, I just love the Super Nintendo the most so uh, if you do if you like Super Nintendo as well give me a like comment subscribe let me know down below if you like this video if you didn't like this video and maybe I can you can help me with some suggestions so as always, thank you for watching.